This isn't your kid's TikTok. No, no, we're talking TikTok microbial clock. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you what the circadian rhythm and your internal clocks has to do with gut function and microbiota composition. So if you want a healthy gut or a healthy microbiome, this might be a big deal for you. Stay tuned. As I filmed this video here for you, it is the best time of year in the Northern Hemisphere. It's June, it's the summer solstice, it's the longest days of the year. The sun doesn't set until 9 p.m. The kids can go out and catch fireflies until all hours of the night. It is amazing for a summer lover such as myself. Maybe I'm biased because I have a July birthday, but in my humble opinion, summer is the best season on planet Earth. So I thought what better way to celebrate the summer solstice and the month of June than a nice video on the circadian rhythm and how this is affecting your gut function. Spoiler, it's affecting your gut tremendously. Every part of your body is on a circadian rhythm, so to speak. And I don't think we give enough credit to this in the IBS, SIBO and gut healing world. So here I'm going to teach you a little bit of the science and then you can decide whether you want to modify your life schedule or your sleep schedule to hopefully have a better, healthier gut. So first thing to know about the science is that there are two main clocks that we're going to be talking about. So on the one hand, we have the brain clock that's in the SCN of your brain. That doesn't matter very much. I'm just flaunting my neurology knowledge. And that is called the master clock. And this is the one that is mostly going to be receptive to light. So this is what you hear talked about a lot in reference to like blue light blocking glasses and turning off screens at night. You basically don't want to frig up this pathway and confuse your brain and make your brain think that it's daytime when you're actually getting ready to go to sleep. So this is the one that gets talked about a lot in like the general health and wellness space. And it's important, don't get me wrong, I love the, per the master clock. But what I want to focus your attention on for a moment is the peripheral clock, which I almost accidentally said there. And there are peripheral, uh, I don't think I can, nah, I'll just do this. So there are peripheral clocks in all of the tissues of your body. So every cell, every organ has its own peripheral clock, but you can think of them particularly in organs like the liver, the pancreas, and the intestines, which obviously are pretty important to people watching this video right now. If you landed on the YouTube channel, Gut Microbiome Queen, for God's sake, you probably care quite a lot about your liver, pancreas, and intestines. So pretty big deal. Now these peripheral clocks, again, they're all over the body, but mostly we're going to think about them primarily in the gut. And I'm just going to simplify this diagram a little bit and say gut has a lot of this. There, a little cleaner. And there are many different ways that you can signal to your gut what time of day it is. Now keep in mind, if you're anything like me, you don't have eyeballs in your gut or your liver. So light is not going to tell the gut what time it is. There are several things that will though. Um, things like your body temperature, exercise, even social interactions, hormone fluctuations, right? Like testosterone is highest in the morning and then goes down in the evening. Thyroid hormone has a cycle. Estrogen has a daily cycle. They all have daily cycles. And things like insulin or glucagon or these food and feeding related hormones and peptides, those have cycles in and of themselves. And that brings me to the point I want to make out of all the things that regulate the peripheral clock and the gut function, the most feeding cycles are the most profound. Now this can take on several forms. A, just are you nourished period? But really, I start thinking about the circadian rhythm of your meal times. So are you eating your meals around the same time every day? Yes, even on weekends, I know it sucks. Or are you all over the place? Do you sometimes eat breakfast? Sometimes you skip. Do you sometimes eat lunch or sometimes you skip or sometimes you have a snack? Do you snack on certain days, but not on other days? This is the sort of stuff that's going to royally confuse your gut and the peripheral clock. And if there's any executive summary between these two clocks and how they interact, it's that they both talk to each other back and forth all day. So the master clock is sending signals to the peripheral clock and vice versa. 
And when these two are not communicating effectively and their communication is severed, shit gets weird. And frankly, your gut doesn't know up from down anymore. So here we are in this wellness space, hoping and praying and just crossing our fingers that our damn gut makes enough stomach acid or makes enough bile or makes enough pancreatic enzymes or calms down their freaking mast cells. And your poor gut is literally trying to figure out what the hell is going on and what time of day it is. Because here we are feeding it irregularly and confusing the hell out of it and not lining up our feeding schedule with the time of day in daylight. Now, as a quick side note, what I just said is gonna spook some people who have to work night shift. I will say this, night shift is not ideal. There's a lot of research saying that it's bad for our health. But if you're going to do night shift work, you wanna try to keep your circadian rhythm consistent even on the days that you are not working. If you could do that, if you could stick to that night owl, night shift schedule, even on days that you're off, you're gonna be way healthier versus trying to ping pong between night owl and normal person mode. So that's my little one minute shtick on that. But let's go back to this idea. So feeding our gut at the same time in a timely manner is the best way we can control for the peripheral clock. Well, what if you just don't want to, right? What if it's hard? What if you don't have a great appetite? Or what if you just don't want to? What if you are dead set on intermittent fasting and that is all there is to it and you're not gonna change this? Or what if you are scared to death to eat more frequently because you think it's gonna feed the SIBO? Or what if you're just a stubborn Sally, right? What is the big freaking deal? Well, A, again, these two communicate, so that's gonna throw off a lot of biological processes. But one of the most fascinating things that I saw when I was researching this topic last year was that our peripheral clock and our, our feeding times actually stimulate the microbiome and we get a circadian rhythm in the microbiome itself. So the feeding also changes the composition and activity of our microbes. And this is really cool. That in turn gives us an oscillation in our immune function on a day-to-day -day basis. And there's one paper, I'll try to remember to link it down in the description box below, but there was a paper that I found that put it really well. And they were talking about how you have a diurnal rhythm to your microbiota, right? Like you have more microbes and more microbiome activity in periods where you're being fed during the daylight hours. And then your microbiome kind of rests a little bit or shrinks, so to speak, in the evening. And then you get a peak when you're feeding them and a little bit of a dip when you're not. And this is the normal day-to-day -day thing that our microbiome does. And as a consequence of that, when the microbiome is peaking, we also get a peak in immune activity and our immune system and its function does this along with the microbiome. And one of those papers that I, I was mentioning says that it's like the body is trying to anticipate potential microbial exposure. So you have your microbes that live in your gut, that's all well and good, but you're also ingesting new microbes every time you eat and drink and put something in your mouth. And your immune system needs to be ready to fight those new microbes when they come down the tube. So by revving up the, the microbiome when you're feeding and then letting it take a break when you're fasted and then revving it up when you're feeding and letting it take a break when you're fasted and doing the same thing for your immune system, you also have better immune function and better immune activity ready and capable to handle microbes and microbial burden from your food and drink during the daylight hours when you're feeding. But again, this only really works if it's a predictable rhythm. This, we can't have a rhythm that's like this and expect our body and our immune system and our gut microbiome and our brain to anticipate our daily needs. So the point of this whole shtick, if there is one to be had, is that we need to get back to feeding ourselves on a regular basis. If you insist on doing intermittent fasting and you wanna to stick to a, a certain time window, fine, that's not the purpose of this particular video, but I'm a really big advocate for three square meals a day. You wake up and maybe within an hour or so of waking up, you eat your breakfast, you have a lunch in the middle of the day, and then you have a dinner 
I would say at least three to four hours prior to bedtime. If you could do a little bit earlier, that's great, but that's kind of the bare minimum that I would recommend. So stereotypical like 8 a.m., noon, 5 p.m. kind of a thing works really well for most people in my finding. And that again is gonna be feeding you during the daylight hours and giving you some rhythmicity in this process so that your gut and your immune system can anticipate your needs and do things like control your mast cells. Yes, this is part of this, by the way. Control your mast cells, control your immune system, control your inflammation levels, regulate your stomach acidity and your bile flow and your pancreatic juices. Give your gut the gift of anticipating your needs. And I think that you will be happy to see that it performs a lot better than you realize it can. But Dr. Janessa, how does this tie in with things like mast cells and histamine and leaky gut and candida? And do I really have to give a shit about this? Or is this something that I could kind of table for the time being and focus on something else? In truth, YouTube friend of mine, I don't know. Because I don't know you. And I don't know your history and your case and your symptoms. So I truly don't know how relevant this is for you as an individual. But what I would say is that if you want that opinion from me, and you want me to get to know you and your case and your history and your symptoms, and we can help you make a treatment plan, make a plan of attack so that you're only focusing on the things that actually really matter and you can kind of table everything else that doesn't matter for you, come check out FODMAP Freedom. We're gonna be enrolling again in August, I think third week of August, if I remember correctly, and I would be absolutely delighted to help you with all of this stuff. So whether you're having pooping problems, diarrhea, constipation, or a mix, if you're bloated, if you have indigestion, if you've been told that you have SIBO or IBS, or if you're stuck on a low FODMAP diet or another SIBO diet, I would love to help you in FODMAP Freedom. And I very much think that I could help you get to the bottom of whatever is ailing you. So much so that if I'm wrong and I'm not able to help you, I will give you 100% of your investment back. There is absolutely no risk. I'm either gonna help you or I'm not, and you're not gonna pay a nickel. So check out FODMAP Freedom. We're enrolling again in August, and I would absolutely love the opportunity to help you. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button, and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.